What's up, guys? Do a little bit of a news segment today. I know some of you rail fans and there's big news yesterday out of uh, folks in Georgia where uh, free uh, says basically this is trains articles says uh, three were injured as CSX trains collide in folks in Georgia. Uh, the article, we're not going to go through the whole thing, but it basically says uh, three CSX crew members have been taken to hospital with non-life-threatening injuries after an intermodal train struck a standing rock train at Folkston, the railroad said in a statement. Uh, the collision occurred at uh, 1.24 p.m. Two locomotives, two intermodal cars, and two rock cars derailed as a result. A small fire resulted that has been extinguished. No hazardous materials were uh, involved. Uh, we appreciate the swift response of the uh, local first responder CSX said in the statement, blah, blah, blah. We don't need to worry about that. Uh, the NTSB has announced it will also be conducting an investigation. Uh, Sheriff's Department says uh, collision occurred just north of State Route 121 overpass in Folkston. Bridge remains open, but the local newspaper says the number of downtown railroad crossings are closed. Says uh, Folkston's popular rail fan location is 35 miles south east of Waycross, Georgia, 42 miles northwest of Jacksonville, Florida. Uh, here's a map. If you're not familiar with Folkston, uh, it's over in Georgia. It's a major junction on CSX. It's uh, a junction between the Nahuna sub and the Jessup sub. Uh, the Nahuna basically runs between Jacksonville, Florida, up to uh, about, uh, I think it's about uh, Savannah. And you can go on north to uh, New Jersey in that way. Like, it goes all the way up the coast. Uh, Jessup Sub branches off in, uh, in Folkston. So, it's a, it's a double main and a double main coming off, splitting there. Uh, the Jessup Sub goes to um, uh, Waycross. And then, eventually, you can go to Manchester. And then, in Manchester, the route splits again. You can go to Atlanta, Cincinnati that way. If you go to the uh, northwest and you go to Birmingham and uh evansville indiana and eventually chicago so it's it's a major uh major junction so they basically they don't say in the article they don't give any de details on what happened but from what i can dope out on everything that i've read uh they had a signal suspension there and basically what a signal suspension suspension means is that they take the signals offline and they run the railroad as dark territory is usually as a segment it's not the entire railroad it's just a segment of territory through there that the signals aren't working. They're doing some kind of work down there on a junction. It looked like they'd been working on the switches, maybe. But uh, either way, they had a signal suspension. Uh, they were running on EC1 forms, which was basically given by the dispatcher to the trains. It gives them instructions on where they're supposed to run and that sort of thing. And then usually, uh, when you have uh, a signal suspension across switches like that, what they, especially a major junction like that, what they will do is they will have a switch tender. I don't know if that was the case here. Maybe they did. I would, I would imagine they did, but I'm not sure on that. It's just purely an assumption on my part. But uh, they would have a switch tender. When we had signal suspensions and when I worked, and we had a few from time to time, they would always call a switch tender to man the switch, and switch tender was called off the conductor's board. And uh, basically what the conductor do is they would go down there, they would sit in the vehicle, they would have a radio, and they would wait for the uh, dispatcher to tell them what to do. Either line the switch uh, to the siding or light it down, you know, normal position down the main, whatever the case may be. So it was a pretty easy job. I never did it. I knew a few guys that did, and they said they liked it pretty good. It's kind of boring, but it was a good pay just to sit there and throw a switch. So I don't know if they had a switch tender there, but what basically happened was uh, the northbound uh, is IO32, which I hate those symbols now. I think they're dumb as hell, but uh, the IO32 was running from Jacksonville to uh, North Bergen, New Jersey, had Tropicana cut on the head end, a big cut of Tropicana cars. Uh, it looks like to me in the pictures that the, uh, the rock train was sitting on the Jessup sub. I really, I, I, I don't, I don't get that. It looked like just glancing at it, it looks like the rock train was sitting on the Jessup sub and they're running loaded northbound, which kind of goes against everything that I've known in the past where rock trains went south to Florida loaded and then empty back north. But for some reason it was sitting on the Jessup sub. 
Uh, and the radio transmission and everything says that they hit head on, but it looks like they just rear-ended them. Like, I, I don't get that. In the radio transmission, the conductor on the rock train says, I'm going back to sea. So they didn't, like, I don't think they hit head on. I'm kind of confused on that. But uh, basically, from what I can dope out, it looks like the IO-32 was supposed to go straight down the Nahuna and they got accidentally lined around the Jessup sub into the back end of this rock train. So uh, that's really unfortunate. The guys were hurt. Didn't say how bad. This is non-life threatening, but it doesn't say how bad they were hurt. I would imagine um, probably back and neck injuries, at least at a minimum. They were going at a good clip when they hit. And when you run under dark territory, uh, signal suspension, maximum authorized speed is 49 mile an hour for your train. So I don't think they were doing that. So they were probably doing, I would imagine, at least 30 to 40 mile an hour when they hit. And they did dump the brakes in the video. Uh, you can hear them dump the brakes. I'm, I'm kind of guessing that when they realized that they were taking the switch and going up the Jessup, which is not the way they were supposed to go, they went ahead and dumped the brakes. But it, it was too late at that point because the rock train was literally just right around the curve. Uh, so, yeah, basically, someone got their wires crossed somewhere, and I hate that. I hate that. Someone messed up somewhere. Somehow, I, I don't know what. I don't know if there is confusion in the instructions. Kind of a busy junction. There's a lot of switches there. You know, there's a crossover, and then there's two switches coming off going up to Jessup. So, uh, one, two, three, what, four switches at least. So I, I don't know. I guess we'll wait on the investigation to see what they say. Uh, it just goes to prove that, you know, bad things can happen on the railroad if you're not careful. And you can see here's another image of it. Yeah, this looks like the Jessup to me. This looks like if you look in the distance, like past the wreckage, and I can't point at it, but if you look in the distance past the wreckage right here, you can see this is that little knot coming out of Folkestone going up towards um, Hague in that way. So, yeah, I, I'm almost certain the IO-32 wasn't supposed to be going that way unless he was a reroute or something. Maybe it was a reroute because they're doing some kind of work. I don't know, but it just seems like to me he got misrouted up to Jessup somehow. Like I said, the, the switches obviously were in hand throw. Maybe they had a switch tender out there manning the switches. I don't, I don't know, but um, yeah, it, it wasn't good. It wasn't good. And the rock train was loaded too. So it's like an immovable brick sitting there when they hit it. If they, if it had been empty, they probably would have plowed through it a good ways. It probably would have been a bigger mess, honestly, but uh, yeah, it looks like a uh, pretty good accident. It looks like they had what? Four units, at least four in the picture here. Count the radiators, one, two, three, four. And that looks like four. Yeah, pretty uh, pretty good one. Like I said, I never did switch tender. Uh, our switch tenders for us were basically, we had, um, we had several sidings that were lengthened. And what would happen is the sidings would be complete. The track and everything would be complete. Everything would be good to go. Uh, the signals just wouldn't be cut in and usually that would take a day or two to cut the signals in so they would call one of our conductors and they would go sit there at the switch and uh, line trains through so like I said pretty uh, pretty easy job but you know in that case you're only manning one switch versus four so you know I kind of it, maybe they forgot a switch I really I, I don't know anyway guys thought y'all might be uh, interested and uh, we'll catch you later peace It's the weirdest day ever. Oh.